Utopia is finally here. After five years of uh, waiting and kind of hints and singles and features and, and controversy um, for Travis Scott, uh, we've finally gotten uh, Utopia. The last few years for Travis Scott have been marred by controversy. Astro World Festival in 2021 obviously being uh, the reason for that. Tra at Travis Scott's Astro World Festival, several people, I think nine or ten people, were killed um, following a a uh, huge mass of people coming together and pushing each other and, and basically people were getting crushed and, and suffocated um, and people were pleading with, with Travis to stop the concert, but he, um, so that, that has obviously been a huge stain on Travis Scott's career and honestly changed the trajectory of uh, where we thought things were going to go. Uh, a lot of people were kind of anticipating Utopia during that time, around the time that Astral Festival occurred and that he'd even put out a couple of singles for it that completely derailed things. Tra it, it was in Travis's best interests to completely lay low um, for quite a while, and that's exactly what he did. Uh, probably a good thing. I, I think releasing music would have been an absolutely tasteless move at that time. Personally, he's not someone that I'm going to support financially by seeing him in concert, buying any kind of merch, anything like that. But this is one of the biggest drops in the last several years, pro probably of the 2020s. Um, and so it would be an injustice for me to not talk about it, react to it, um, especially considering Travis's, you know, commercial success. Okay, so I'm editing right now, and I did see a report that um, people were in Travis's earpiece, his team was in his earpiece telling him to stop the show, that people were passing out and dying. And if that's the case, fuck him. Fuck him so hard. He's a piece of shit. Um, I, and it's still, even if it's not true, it's still a really shitty situation and really difficult. And I don't think he's absolved of blame, but um, I just want to make sure that it's clear that my opinions on the art are separate from my opinions on the artist. And I will not be supporting him in any meaningful way. Um, but I just wanted to clear that up that, yeah, he's obviously done a lot of damage and caused a lot of hurt. I just want to make sure it's clear that I'm not defending or supporting him or anything he's done. I'm strictly judging the album. Um, you know, let's get into actually dissecting the album. So starting off the album with Hyena, um, that's an incredibly strong start, I would say. Just that first 20, 30 seconds of, of dialogue, not what I was expecting at all, really um, a really bold choice for an opener. And I think it works really well because it, it kind of sets up the, the vibe, that kind of eerie haunting vibe that's kind of there, um, really leads well into the entire album. And when you instantly transition, to the, the really strong beat. That was a moment where I, I knew there was gonna be a lot of energy coming on that first song and throughout the album. And I think instantly, you know, the the verses, the the beat, the energy on Hyena is, it makes it one of the best songs on the album and a really, really good opening for this album. I think it sets the tone really well. And I think it kind of establishes the, that it's gonna be a little bit of a darker, moodier album. And then we move on to Thank God. That one's just another one with really strong flows. Another really good, kind of industrial, dark, experimental beat. Um, and, and, and again, I, you know, I'm listening to, to these, these cup, first couple songs and my expectations were, were, I'm not sure exactly what they were to be honest, but this, this was not what it was. Um, but I think it was a pleasant surprise. I think that it, it sounds really good. And I think Travis fits on this, this dark sound really well. And I think a lot of people were kind of hoping for him to go back to it. Through the first two songs, I was really, really impressed. Strong 808, like the, that bass on, on Hyena is, is crazy. It really set the tone um, in a really strong way. Kind of was what a lot of people were hoping for as well. You know, a lot of people were kind of hoping for this return to the dark sound. So it was, it was cool to see. Um, immediately, you could tell that there was a lot of influence from Kanye West, particularly Yeezus. Uh, that is one of my personal favorite albums of all time. My feelings about Kanye West obviously completely aside, but that, that album I think is really excellent. And one of the best examples of experimental hip hop production kind of infiltrating the mainstream, I think that is just an incredible album. And so I think that you can really see that throughout the, the industrial type of sound that Travis is playing with on this album. And that was abundantly clear even through just the first couple of songs. Then we move on to Modern Jam. Modern Jam is it's an okay song. It's pretty, it's pretty good, but I have a really, really big problem with uh, the lyric on, on this song where he says, the way I make it jump, I make it hard to breathe. Uh, that feels so unbelievably insensitive and moronic from Travis Scott. And honestly, I don't see enough people upset about it or talking about it online uh, in light of obviously the Astroworld tragedy. I think it is, it's a pretty disgusting thing to say, honestly. 
um, and just completely tasteless. It, it really pissed me off and it, 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 it ruins the entire song. I think he otherwise has strong flows and, and, and good, you know, just structure to the song, but that completely turns me off the song and it almost turned me off of the album. It, I, it is a really frustrating thing to hear him speak about it like that when, you know, it, 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 people were already frustrated that they felt that he was not being sincere in his initial apology and reaction to the whole situation. So hearing that really just makes me think that he does not care um, about the victims that, that died that day. And, and that is that is just disgusting to hear. It makes it difficult to, to root for a guy like Travis Scott when he's saying things like that um, and just completely ignoring all of the the serious allegations and issues that have been made against him. You know, I, I find myself in a difficult place when it comes to whether or not to stream his music. I, I honestly went a long time without streaming his music after the whole situation. Um, and and I'm going to have to see, there's still, you know, information that's being uncovered about this incident. I know there was a recent police report uh, from the Houston PD and, and all kinds of stuff coming out. So I, I'm going to have to figure out where, my, where I stand on that situation. But um, that aside, and, and just strictly music, um, you know, I, I'll move on with the album for now. So we move on to, to My Eyes. Um, a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth going into it, but um, My Eyes is a pretty good song. I think the first half um, is okay. I think Samfa, the Samfa feature is really strong. I think Travis's delivery in the first half, his singing is just all right. But the, the transition, that beat switch into that flow is definitely my favorite part of this album, I would say. He, he absolutely destroys that flow. He just crushes that, that beat. And, and it is a really, really good second half of the song. Expectedly, a lack of lyrical content, really. Um, it's, it's, but you know what, it's Travis Scott. I'm not really expecting anything super meaningful. Um, but just pointing that out, that, that that's present on this song and, and throughout the album. Then we move on to God's Country, which is by far the worst song on the album, in my opinion. The, the la la, that sample, whatever that is, the la 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 sample, is the most annoying thing I've ever heard in my life. And honestly, the rest of the song is not that bad. I don't know why he chose to do, do that. I don't know. I mean, I, I've seen some people say they like it, but to me, so, so annoying. Easily the worst song on the album. I don't even really have much to say about it. I think it just sucks. And then we move on to Sirens. Sirens is pretty good. This is a good example of a little bit more of this industrial Yeezus type of production that we've come to, you know, that, that I was talking about earlier. I think it's pretty good. I think the flow is good, especially in the second half. I think the flow is really strong there. Good production. I, I think he creates really good soundscapes throughout this album, and that's that's what I'm noticing so far. Um, and that's, that's definitely true on Sirens. And then you have the outro, which is kind of funny. You know, it's Drake saying uh utopia is here or this or it looks perfect it look yeah they're, they're at utopia in his hotel room or something and that was pretty funny and then it obviously transitions into meltdown i i keep seeing people talk about meltdown being their favorite song on the entire album i don't really see it i i to me it's the second worst after god's country it's it's starting to grow on me like i think maybe it's not the second worst i think maybe like del resto and um and k-pop are worse but it's not great. I, Drake's vocals, for whatever reason, I know he's whispering, but it also sounds like he's like a foot away from the microphone or something. Like wherever he's supposed to, if he's supposed to be here, he's he's here. It, it, you can tell that like they were not in the same studio when they recorded it and, and something sounds weird about his vocals. And that, maybe that's me being nitpicky, but to me, mixing matters and, and it sounds strange. And, and I don't mind, like I think his flow is like fine and whatever, but I don't know, like it's not a bad song. It's just like, whatever like it's pretty forgettable to me um but i see a lot of people talking about that they hope that this is what drake does on his drake's new album and i i don't know i mean like maybe it's just not for me i don't know it just didn't it didn't really resonate with me the way it did for a lot of other people but i mean i've seen it be a lot of people's favorite song and people say drake had the best feature on the album which i think is a ludicrous take but you know it is what it is and then we move on to fiend fiend is pretty good um i think there's a lot of people who uh, are just blind Cardi supporters and are just gonna support anything he does um, that think this song is better than it is. I don't think this song is incredible, but I think it's solid. I think it's a pretty good song. Um, the the deep voice Cardi was really interesting, I will say. And the chorus is the chorus is pretty good. The production is quite good. The production is is really good on this song. I love that like synth 
sound, whatever it is that it's a really interesting synth sound that that kind of high synth up there. I don't know, like it's it's just like something about it. It's like a good, it's another just like good solid song, but it's not anything like incredibly outstanding to me. I, part of it may also be that I'm not as much of a fan of Cardi recently. Dial It is my favorite album of his by a, a long shot. Um, so maybe it's it just has something to do with his delivery, but I don't think Travis's delivery is really anything to be reckoned with on this song either. I think it's just like a pretty good song, but it's not anything to write home about necessarily. But I can see it being played at parties and, and you know, I, I, I'll probably still listen to it some. Um, it's just, it, like, it's not, it's not bad. Like I said, it's just, it just like solid. And I don't think it's one of the best ones like a lot of people seem to. I think it would be really interesting if we see uh, Cardi's low voice uh, like this, you know, in, in, in his new music or on his new album, Music, that he's been talking about. Uh, that low voice Cardi was um, certainly something we've never seen before out of him. And, and I'd be intrigued if, if that's the direction he takes it. I think it was interesting. I thought it was a little yachty at first but, because I wasn't listening with any, like the credits open or anything like that. So I thought it was a little yachty because because it just didn't, I, I, did, I couldn't, didn't even register that it was Cardi. I thought Cardi was just on the on the hook, on the chorus, and then that was Yachty doing the verses. Yeah, moving to Del Resto, I don't really have much to say here. I just think it's just an okay sound. It's like funky or whatever, um, but it was a little bit underwhelming. When you think Travis Scott and Beyonce, you think that's probably gonna be a pretty good song, and it just wasn't. Like the tempo was strange. Like it, it felt like the tempo of the of the beat and the tempo of the vocals were different somehow. I, I don't know. Now also, it's a four and a half minute song, and I think that that is way too long. I actually have that complaint about several songs in this album. There are a lot of times that Travis will get in a really good pocket with the the soundscape that he's created and his vocal flows and whatever, but he just drags it on too long. Um, and that's that's definitely present on this song. It's like, it would be better, I think, if it was like a two and a half, three minute song, but it's four and a half minutes and that just makes it, I, it just drags. And, uh, and that's the case for a couple of songs in this album. Not too many, but definitely a couple. And then moving on to I Know, that's a pretty solid song. Yeah, the chorus is just okay. Um, it's another one that just, I don't have a ton to say about it, just solid, nothing incredibly special. Topia Twins is, is definitely pretty good. Uh, Topia Twins is something I can see being played at a lot of parties. I think that uh, that's a pretty big hitting trap song. Um, just just kind of a little bit more on what you would expect from Travis Scott, still in the darker side of, of his production, but I think definitely a little bit more of sound that people were expecting, kind of similar to the Astroworld sound. Um, and, and it's a good song for parties. I think it fits that pocket well. And you can always expect some of that from Travis Scott. So yeah. And then you have Circus Maximus. I, I like this song. It's, it's pretty good. The, uh, I like the production a lot, the drum pattern and Travis's flow is really nice. The weekend doesn't do a ton for me on this song. Um, but I mean, I'm not the biggest weekend fan in, in, in the first place. So it might just be that bias showing it's solid. Um, like I said, that, that I really enjoy that drum pattern and, um, and I, and I and I like this song quite a bit. It's it's just that yeah, like I said, the weekend doesn't doesn't do a lot for me on this song. But but Travis Travis does his thing, and and I liked what he was doing here. And then you have Parasail, which is you know the slow vibey song that you get like maybe two of per album. I think it does a pretty decent job. I think it does a pretty good job. I would compare it to Stop Trying to Be God. I don't think it's nearly as good as Stop Trying to Be God, but it's you know similar space that he's kind of playing with. Um, and and it, you know it, it it works. This section of the album is just kind of dragging on for me at this point. Um, where it's a lot of like just solid songs, but nothing that's standing out to me incredibly hard. I'm waiting kind of for a big moment. I want to hear something really solid. And then we get onto uh, Schizo. Uh, Schizo's pretty good. Um, the 808s are really, really strong on this song. Um, and the second half is, is I think, considerably better than the first. The second half of this song is really good. Um, and yeah, the Young Thug feature um, for Young Thug. It's, it's another like just between seven and eight type of song that just doesn't doesn't do a ton for me. And like I would listen to, but I'm not going out of my way to listen to it all the time. And then we have Lost Forever. I really like this song. I'm a big West Side Gun fan. And I think his verse is really cool. I, I honestly, as soon as I heard the beat, it, it, I, I kind of could tell that some somebody in that lane was gonna be featured. Somebody from Griselda or, or, or something like that, like in the Danny Brown, West Side Gun, uh, Benny the Butcher, that 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 type of sound is, is that this beat is, like a little bit grimier than a lot of the rest. Um, it, it still fits in that dark sound. And I think West Side Gun really fits perfectly onto this this um, this song and, and this album. I think he's a really good uh, vibe fit for this album than for what Travis was going for here. And I honestly can't believe that I hadn't thought of a West Side Gun and Travis Scott collaboration sooner because I think it works really well. Um, 
yeah, love West Side Guns ad libs, classic. Uh, love love his voice. I just I really like what he did here. Um, he's definitely the stronger part of this song. And then we go to Love. That's a really, really, really good song. I really, the, now we're getting back to the stronger section of the album. I think this song is really, really good. I, I hear a lot of Yeezus in this song though. I will say a ton of the Yeezus influence is really present in the production from this song, um, but, I, but I like it a lot. I think it's really good. I love the, the industrial sound that you kind of get through this song. Um, and Kid Cudi at the end is pretty good. Um, his feature was pretty short, so it's, it, it didn't like add a ton for me, but I liked what I heard of him. I liked Travis's flow. I just, I really, really enjoy this song quite a bit. As we're getting towards the end of the album, you got K-pop, the single. Um, I don't hate it. A lot of people really seem to hate it. I'm glad the entire album doesn't sound like this, but I, I don't know. I thought it was another pretty decent song that if I heard it at a party or whatever, I would be fine with it, but I don't have a ton to say about it. Just a nice little reggaeton vibe, a little bit, definitely another thing that was quite different from what I think everybody was expecting from Travis. And I think a lot of people are relieved that it doesn't sound like this, the whole album. I think a lot of people really don't like this song. I don't have a major problem with it, like I said, but just okay. Telekinesis, wow, I was blown away. Um, so if you don't know, this is an old leak. Uh, I think it was called Future Sounds and it in initially had Kanye on it. I think it was actually rumored to be on Donda. Um, so I've been listening to this leak for like years um, and it's really one of my favorites, like just, just Absolutely, the the horns that just repeats throughout the song is just something special. It, it, it gives you that kind of ascending feeling, that floating feeling that you see like in that meme with SpongeBob, you know, levitating. That's that's really what that those horns kind of make me feel like with those like low end synths, that like deep bassy synth underneath. Just a really, really phenomenal song. The moment I heard the trumpets, I, I freaked out because, and he somehow exceeded the leak. This song is my favorite on the album and it's not even particularly close. Hyena is a pretty close second, but after that, there's no one even in the same realm in this as this uh, on this album. Future is an incredible fit. I, I, I love the way that Future kind of fits into that slow energy. I, I love when Future gets on a little bit of a more mellow song. Um, I think he, he does great things on songs like that, and this is certainly no exception. He sounds fantastic. His flow fits perfectly with this vibe. Um, and then you have Travis doing his thing. Um, I don't love the one part where those that little high kind of drilly synth sound comes in um, and kind of overtakes the horns, but I get it. You know, you need to progress the song in some way. I just think there could have been a better way to do it. But then we move on to the SZA feature, which sounds unbelievable. This is the best feature on the album and it's not particularly close. SZA sounds like an angel. It really sounds like the, the gates of heaven being opened up. I love the way she sounds in this song. She sounds absolutely incredible. She's such a phenomenal singer. Um, and, and hearing her on this beat, which is one of my favorite beats of all time, was just absolutely mind blowing, especially the way she did. She just had a really strong entrance. Her flow is great the entire way through. Such a talented vocalist love what she does on this song she makes she makes the song go from a pretty good song to the masterpiece that it is and then we finish off the album with till further notice um this is another one i love how dark this song is i think this is exactly what people were hoping for in terms of bringing back that kind of rodeo sound it, it's haunting james blake's vocals over that just like low little 808 pattern and, and absolutely incredible. It makes this really eerie soundscape and I think it sounds really good. Um, and then you get the 21 Savage feature and I think that honestly, 21 Savage, I love, love 21 Savage. I think he's a great rapper. I don't know if he was the best fit on this song. I know he's considered to be, you know, do, does really well on like dark beats, but I think this one in particular, something about it, it takes a song from this like haunting, haunt like just eerie creepy soundscape that really is almost uncomfortable uh, but in a good way and it takes that and it kind of shifts you can even hear the change in the way the song is produced for 21 savages verse it's very um it's a lot more trap oriented um and it still has those dark elements um but but i think it, i think it honestly takes away from the song's biggest strength but like it's not a bad verse or anything um and i'm always happy to hear a 21 verse so um it, it knocks the, the song down just a little bit for me, but not in a really serious way. And Travis's flow is is phenomenal on the back end of the song. And and so I think this is another really, really good song. This is another one that's in my top five on the song, but if not for 21 Savage's verse, I, and I can't believe I'm saying this, I think it would be top two to three. So, I mean, that's that's 
rare that I think a 21 Savage verse makes the song worse, but I think this is one of those cases, unfortunately. So yeah, I mean, overall, I enjoyed this album. I did. I think it certainly met expectations. I don't know if it really exceeded expectations, um, but I think it met what people's expectations were. Uh, this is, this has been something that people have been waiting on for a really long time. It's been in the discourse as some of the one of the most anticipated albums for years. People have been talking about this since the pandemic, this album. So I mean, clearly, um, it's, it's been a really highly anticipated project. And when there's that much hype about an album, it's difficult to live up to the hype. Ike lives up to it, but a lot of people, I've seen people saying this is a top 10, top five trap album ever. I don't think I can go that far. I don't think I can go as far as to say this is the best rap album of the 2020s. I, I There's a lot of steps that people are taking that I personally would not take. Um, I don't even think this is Travis Scott's best album. I think it's maybe not even his second best album. I, I, I'm not here to complain about this album. I think it's good. I think it's probably about an eight out of 10, um, which is a strong rating, certainly. That's a really good score. But I think a lot of people are treating it like it's a 10 and there are definitely several flaws on this album. Um, I also just wanted to add that I think the biggest strength of this album is the atmosphere. I don't think that, honestly, like I think there are a lot of songs on this album that are just all right. Um, if, if I was scoring it strictly based on songs, it would probably be a seven, but I think that the, the overall atmosphere that he creates and is able to kind of carry out throughout the entirety of the project is what elevates it from a seven to an eight. Um, and yeah, overall enjoyable. I mean, it's been everywhere just in the past few days to it's Sunday. The album came out on Friday. It's going to be everywhere for a while. It's, it's going to be one of the most commercially successful albums of all time. I think rap albums anyways, um, it's had a humongous opening couple days. Um, but I don't know if, if I'm quite on board with it as much as some people are calling it his best, calling it his magnum opus, I wouldn't go there. You know, I'm interested to see uh, long-term how this project ages because, you know, Yeezus, which it's heavily inspired by, obviously, um, and I've talked about, uh, is one of those that I think aged really well. I think initially that album was received poorly even. I don't think, this album has obviously been received very well, but um, Yeezus has aged incredibly well. And obviously Kanye West himself as a personality has not. But um, I, I'm wondering if this will take on a similar vein. Um, but like I said, I liked it, eight out of 10, but it, it, there are definitely things that, that could have been better about it. So yeah, uh, let me know what you thought about it. Let me know if you liked it. Um, let me know if you think it's really is one of the best few albums of, of the decade of, of the um, all time. I, I mean, I, I don't know, um, but just let me know your take. I would love to hear about it and, and talk about it because I, you know, I, I love talking about music and, and um, and I just, I can't wait to see what you guys think about it, see how this ages and um, just see the discourse around it continue to evolve. Uh, but yeah, so thanks for the much, blah, blah. thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.